December 7th, 2020, Berlin Select Board to order. Um, the, uh, with us is um, John Quinn, Angelina Capron, Justin Lawrence, and Flo Smith. Also with us is Tom Badowski and Diane Isabel, our town treasurer. Um, I guess, Diane, you can start this with the- um, Yeah, with the budget. Okay. Budget. Yeah, does everyone have, I thought I would start with the, uh, the revenue portion. Does everybody have that? I sent everything out on Friday. Okay, good. And I'm, I'm gonna try to make it quick. I'll go through these things quickly. If you've got questions, just let me know. Okay, so looking at the state of Vermont, which has to do with the railroad levy, uh, the highways and the state hospital. I am thinking that we're, I'm adding a little bit for the revenue on the highway part, on the highway part of it, um, because this for the class two and three roads, because the last couple of years we have been getting a little more money. So I thought I might just as well add that into it. Uh, as far as the state hospital, that's always at 25,000. And that's because we have uh, what we call a memorandum of understanding with them. And that is through, you know, that's through eternity, uh, is $25,000 every year. And we started that back in 2016. And that was because when they built it, they thought that maybe um, they would need our services for the police more. So that's what we have that for. So I'm saying there should be an increase in that. And then when I look at the totals for the licenses and fees, I've kept everything there pretty stagnant. Although I did increase the town clerk by 5,000. And I think that that's reasonable just because there's been an awful lot of, lot, lot happening as far as home selling. Uh, and I think that um, she can get more revenue. And I think I've been underestimating the revenue that she has been making right along. So I've increased that. Uh, and that's really about the only one I increased. So I brought that total up a little bit. Uh, as far as the property taxes, I'm leaving um, the current use and leaving at 40,000. We never know what we're gonna get from that. That is depending on the changes of current use throughout the year. And the state's the one that mandates that. I really can never guess what's gonna happen there. Um, and then the reappraisal revenue, that is based on per parcel. And it's usually around 12,000, it was 13,000 last year. Um, so I'm gonna leave it at 12,005. I would rather underestimate the revenues and overestimate them. And then the pilot revenue, I'm leaving at 185, even though we always do more than 185, 60% of the pilot revenue is from the state. And you never know with the state if they're going to be able to fund it or not. Every year they always talk, they might not, and they have up to this point, but I don't want to say we're going to make money that we're not going to, that we potentially might not make. And then as far as the interest, I bought the, I brought the interest down in the bank as far as the checking accounts go, because right, we were getting, last year, we we're getting a half of one ten, half of a percent for um, interest in the checking account. Right now we're getting one tenth of a percent for interest. So that really, we had uh, like over $3 million in the checking account in the month of November, I got $95 for interest. So all I'm saying is I'm gonna bring that level down even at $1,500 for the year, that might be pretty high. And I didn't change the other levels as far as delinquent taxes, um, or the delinquent tax interest. Uh, and then as far as the miscellaneous revenues, which are on the second page, um, the water control, the water pollution control account is the rent that the sewer commission pays for having the use of my office and having stuff in my office. So that stays at $4,500. The Berlin Historical Society, they've always paid $250. Last year, Dana wanted to increase it to 300, but never told them. So, you know, I'm leaving it at the 250 because you know, I don't know if you want me to, you know, try to increase that, but I want to give them some warning before we do that. Um, otherwise, not the police revenues, I am leaving the same. So I am looking overall for the revenues at being 0.16% higher. And I think that that's very conservative. I really think we can do that and maybe, you know, go even above that. But it only takes one thing to go sour and then, you know, then we really lost it. So that is for the revenues. Then I wanted to go into the only, general. So, so before, before, before we okay. get there, I, I just have one question way back from the beginning around the okay. highway funds. Mm -hmm. thing that those, you said that those have gone up the past couple of years. Which yep. funds specifically are you talking about? I am talking about the class two and class three roads. Each quarter they give us money um, for, I guess, right. you know, yeah, for general repair, whatever it is that they give to us. And 
you know, they make that determination based on how many class two rows now and class three rows we have. And I don't know exactly how they come up with the, you know, the formula. I've not looked into that part of it, but it's I do mileage. know the last few years we've gotten a few more, you know, it's been a few hundred dollars more. Uh, yes, yeah, not thousands. Interesting. When I was in North Carolina, mm -hmm. they, had, they had kept that number same for a number of years and started giving towards special projects. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I was just, I was, yeah, I wasn't, I, I, I wasn't aware that they were giving more now. They, they have been, and I agree with you, because for quite a few years, it was stagnant. It just stayed the same. And then the last few years, they've been giving us more. So I thought, well, I might as well just show a little bit of an increase. You know, I think we'll probably get it. Okay. Are we ready to go on to the general fund budget for the expenses? That's the second part of the, the formula. That's, that's a lot of different categories there. So I wanted to bake, break it more into the categories. Now the wages I am basing on 2% increase. However, for the um, town administrator, we are looking at having a 10% increase for that particular position uh, with the new person that's gonna come on board. So that one's showing 12% because that would reflect the new pay amount plus 2% on top of that. So I just want to point that out. Uh, the Board of Civil Authority, I don't know if anybody is aware, uh, we never usually use that. However, if there's a lot of meetings with the Board of Civil Authority, uh, there are occasions that they could get paid. I've never seen it all the years I've been here, but you never know. So we do leave, I do leave some money in that. Um, office supplies, I'm bringing that down by $3,000. I think that we can do a better job as far as what we buy and where we buy it from. And the majority of the office supplies is paper, um, but we do try to get the best deal that we can. And right now we get the state deal and that is with WB Mason. And um, you know, that is the biggest part that's the paper and also uh, the ink cartridges. That's another big thing. The clerk and treasure training, I'm bringing that down. Um, I'm leaving it at $500 because there are certain meetings that um, Rosemary and Corinne have to attend for the town clerk every year. But beyond that, we don't really use that training for anything else. So I thought I'd bring it down to a level that where we really need it to be. Uh, computer equipment, we don't need to buy any new computers. And if we do, we have a $15,000 reserve for computers from the pr previous year. So I didn't add in anything for that. Uh, the clerk copier, I'm bringing that down to the level of what the lease is right now, because we have a new lease on that that we got from last year. The lease came down in price. Um, records restoration, I'm leaving that where it is. The postage as well. Um, I think, so I'm bringing that... I'm showing an increase of 2%, and the 2% has to do with the payrolls, basically. Uh, and then the assessing department. Um, on that one, I'm saying that maybe 1.5% uh, increase for the assessors, although the last two years, they have not increased the fees. So maybe they won't, but I'm showing it at 1.5, just in case they do. Um, supplies, I think we can bring that down a little bit. And uh, legal fees, I'm bringing that down just to $100. It's very rare that we have legal fees. And if we do have legal fees, it's for errors and omissions. So it's very, very rare that we've ever used that. Uh, the tax maps, I'm bringing down by $500. Um, we've been getting new tax maps every year. Since Dana was there, it was every single year. Uh, that's one thing we might want to discuss at some time. Maybe we want to go every two years. But I'm showing it every year because I'm being consistent with the way we did it in the past few years. So I'm showing that that's a decrease of 2.44%, although potentially we could bring that down even more. Um, and for the town meetings and elections, that one I brought down by 22% because next year there's going to be just a town meeting vote and then maybe a special meeting. There's not going to be uh, like the presidential election or you know, the every two years when we do elect people for the legislature. So I brought down the, the fees on that. Then the next page is insurances. And then I do still don't have the insurance, the insurance rates from the VLCT for FY22. I'm hoping to have that anytime. Once I have that, I will plug it in. But right now I'm just kind of leaving it stagnant where it is. Health insurance, I'm predicting that maybe it'll increase by 7%. However, if you look at the health, uh, the health insurance for general, I've increased that higher because potentially our new town administrator might be on the family plan. Right now, there's only the town administrator myself on it. Um, and 
right now it's just me and I'm on the single plan. So if that might go down, if our new town administrator doesn't have to have the family plan, it might just be a two person or single for that person. Um, and then the FICA expenses is just you know, related to the payroll. Um, actually the FUTA SUDA, which is the unemployment, I did get the new rates that were from um, the VLCT on that one. And our rate last year for the entire, um, entire town was $252. In FY22, it's be $1,970. And obviously they're trying to recoup the money that they've had to pay for a lot of different towns uh, with the COVID. So that is, I'm showing a 438% increase. And that's because that's a fixed increase. There's nothing that we can do to change that one as long as we use the League of Cities and Towns for unemployment. And then the life insurance and the, um, the disability insurance, I've just based it based on who, what I think is going to be for the new town administrator with the population that we have right now in our town offices. So I made the changes there. Employee benefits is just gym memberships and the only person we had on it last year was Dana. Uh, the pension, the pension plan is going up from 6% match for the employer to 6.25%. And so I'm showing an increase of 10.35% because of the town administrator's pay being higher. Um, so I am showing a 12% increase for that department. The zoning department is next. And I'm showing a decrease in the zoning department. I'm saying with them, uh, the training, I think that we had too high, I put it down a lower level. The inspection mileage, I put down as well. Uh, the telephone, I'm leaving it the same amount. And uh, the legal fees I'm bringing right down is very, I don't ever think I've seen a time when we've had legal fees on the zoning department. Potentially it could be there, but I'm not gonna anticipate that. So I'm showing a 52% decrease in that. And the DRB is the next. And the secretary, the secretary we've had for the last two years did not charge as much as the secretary we had from previous. So I'm bringing that level down to be in line with what she's actually charging. So that's a 70% decrease for her. The legal fees I'm bringing down, we rarely have legal fees for DRB. Uh, so I'm showing a 51% decrease in that particular department. And just to make you aware, the zoning and DRB, the fees for that are basically covered from the revenue that we have from uh, the fees that we charge on the revenue side. And that actually is more than what we have for expenditures for the zoning and DRB. Uh, the planning commission, I'm leaving the same as it is. Um, I've got $20,000 in case we need for consultant fees for this next year for FY22. I was asked by the Planning Commission to put that $21,000 in. Um, other boards and commissions. Um, the Recreation Board, we, I, I reached out to them, nobody answered me. I don't even know if I reached out to the right, peaceful, right people, but we do have money in the reserve for the Recreation Board. We have $8,000 in there, so I didn't build anything in there. If they want to spend some money, they do have $8,000 in reserves. Uh, the Conservation Commission had asked me to put in $2,000 for them. And just a second, I can tell you why they wanted it there. They want it, they have to, they want to have some work done. Let me find that here. Uh, they want to improve Irish Hill Trail System. So they're asking to have money for that. However, the Conservation Commission does have $47,000 in reserves. So potentially they could use the reserve money as opposed to us giving them money in addition. I wanted to bring that up. Uh, Green Up Day, we always put in $400. And what happens with that one is that uh, the seller waste also pitches in with us. So they charge us $400 and then they pay for the rest. And so we've always put, paid for the green up day. The state's asked us to put in some money for that normally. So I've left it at the value that we had it there. In the emergency management, uh, they've asked me to put in twelve to put in twelve hundred dollars. I think they might have asked me to put in more. And I didn't up that. Just a second. Hmm. I'm not finding where I put my notes on that one. Oh, okay, here it is. All right, a fire department is twelve hundred for the fire dispatching. They did ask me to add in two hundred dollars for animal disaster, and I forgot to do that. So I should bring that up to fourteen hundred dollars if we give them what they're asking for. 
but they, and like I say, 200 of it is something we've never done before, but they are asking for this animal issue. So I will make that change uh, just for my notes here. Okay, and then cemeteries, uh, we always put aside $10,000. Normally we spend about $7,000 in the plowing, plowing, uh, not plowing, but mowing and maintenance. Um, and I do hear that some of our cemeteries are in pretty bad shape, that some of the stones have fallen down, the fences are in really bad shape. We have not put any money into the cemeteries at all. So I'm leaving that at 10,000 at this point in time. Uh, it would be good if we could put some money into it. Obviously that's something if you wanted to change that we definitely could. Okay, and then the next page on that. Or, I'm sorry, I was down the end of that one already. Good, so the totals for that is gonna be zero. I'm not making any change to the cemetery. Okay, so now we're into the taxes and assessments. So the animal control constable, I'm leaving that the same. The county tax has a fixed amount that I am, that we're billed every year. I'll find out probably in the next two months how much that's going to be. So I'm leaving it 40,000. Uh, ambulance service for both. I am increasing that by 7% because I do believe that might be the increase uh, from the, if we were to continue to go with Barrytown. So I'm showing an increase there. Um, and then I'm showing that in part of our ambulance service is through Northfield. Uh, it's the town of Northfield, so potentially they may also bring that level up. I haven't heard anything from them at this point in time. Humane Society, um, I brought that down to $500. We don't tend to, to get that many fees from that. Central Vermont Solid Waste, um, we did get the new rate for that for FY22, so I put that in. Uh, Central Vermont Econo Economic Development, uh, we always give them $500 every year, and they do you know, help us in various items. Uh, I have not received the new VLCT due, VLCT dues for FY22. Uh, the Regional Planning Commission, I have not received anything from that. I'm assuming that will probably go up a little bit. Uh, now totals for the town offices. Um, I am leaving the janitorial services at $8,500, despite the fact we pay like, you know, under $5,000 at this point. It would be nice if we could, um, I'm not trying to put down the person that's doing our cleaning, but it's it's not at a very good level. Um, I would rather, I think I'd like to have us put that out to bid and see if we can't get somebody who would do um, more cleaning. Because uh, right now, um, basically she empties a trash in my room and doesn't do anything else. And I don't know how much she does in the other parts of the building. So so either we need to talk to her again or you know probably put, go out to bid with it. Supplies, I'm bringing that down because I think that you know we're doing pretty good with the PPE and cleaning supplies. Uh, admin training, I'll leave it $1,500 because that's normally the town administrator training and I'm assuming that the next town administrator is gonna need some, some training. Uh, the copier, I've got that at the level that we have right now at 1650. So it's up a little bit, but that's because um, we, I think we got it, I think we're, we're gonna be getting a new copier maybe this year, this next year, our um, contract should be up pretty soon. And um, the admin advertising, I brought that down by $500. The software support, um, now I've left that at 11,500. If we are to continue with the, um, the equipment that we have right now, $11,500 is just not even gonna be enough. And I received um, information today that the Linux that we have, which is what drives our, um, our Outlook program no longer is being serviced. They do not offer anything for it. And it, the reason is because it's too old. Uh, and so our, the RB tech is telling us, well, maybe we should get, um, it's time to get a new server. So I will forward that information that I was sent today um, from um, RB tech to you so that you can see that. So right now I've left it that I'm really hoping that we can get a new computer system so that we can avoid a lot of these fees because they, they tend to grow and grow as time goes on. Okay, and then the web page- I'm not super excited yeah. about, I'm not super okay. excited about some of the modern things that r and or RB is doing for us. Like we should be on a email platform that lets you check it from anywhere, right? Yes. And that, that's easy to use. We can do that in Microsoft Office in a, in a quick mm -hmm. subscription. Um, that you know anyone in the office should be able to set up and then as far as server needs like maybe rb is the or rb is the right place but um 
some of the some of the things like email, you know, are definitely outdated as far as what we should be doing. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. And we need to do something with the server, no matter what. Last year we were going to get a new server. That's why we had the fifteen thousand, and then it just didn't happen. So I think this year we need to make something happen. So you know, so help obviously. And I think that John, you were going to help us at one point, anyways. So that would be. Right. Yeah, we talked about it a little bit. I, yeah. I don't know enough about the server piece, but you know, the communication mm -hmm. piece, the email piece is very easy mm -hmm. to solve. Okay. Um, we just got to sit down. It's been difficult with COVID to figure out exactly yeah. some of the details. But okay, good. We'll do it. Yeah, let's plan on that then. That, at least if we can get one piece of the puzzle done, then I think that would help us tremendously. Okay. Uh, the web page, I mean, that's a service that we have. Um, you know, someday it'd be nice to change that web, but our website, but for right now it is working for us and it, it does what we need it to do. Uh, the cloud backup, once again, that's expensive because of the server that we have and the Linux that we use. Uh, backup storage fees, that is starting to grow. So I've got to get in touch with RB because our cloud backup is with Amazon. And for a very long time, uh, the monthly fees were like 15, 20 bucks. All of a sudden, the fees have been growing. They've been growing fast, 150 to 200. I think the last time it was almost 300. So I got to figure out what's going on. I'm going to call RB Tech and ask them to help me look into this because this doesn't make any sense to me. Why should that be growing at such a rapid rate? So I'd like to be able to bring that one down, but I have to be able to, you know, bring it down, you know, realistically before I can present it to you. So I'll be working on that this next week. Um, and maintenance for the building. I brought that down a little bit, although there are things that really should be fixed. Uh, and then obviously for maintenance too, um, next year we'll be fixing that wall, I'm assuming, and I will have a, you know, a certain amount of money they're gonna pay for the wall that we discussed last year, the insurance company gave me. Um, and so I know we'll probably end up having to kick in some money, but you know, until um, Connor can come in and fix it, then you know, we just don't know exactly how much it's gonna be at this point. Now the vehicle, I am putting zero for that vehicle. That vehicle is old. It's, it needs an awful lot of repairs. And, I, and nobody really, I don't think anybody really needs to have an office vehicle. We all have our own cars. Uh, if we have to do something for the town, then we get paid mileage. And the mileage would be a lot less money than putting repairs into that vehicle. Because like I say, the vehicle is old. I can't remember, maybe it's a 2014 maybe, something like that, but every time uh, it seems like somebody puts it on the road, there's more and more money to put into it. So I, like I say, I put it at zero, just hoping we can sell the vehicle and not have to have one for the town, but maybe you might feel differently. Um, heating, uh, heating and utilities, I'm leaving at the same level. Uh, the internet, I am bringing that up a little bit because, because of the fees that we're going through right now, uh, because of the Linux program that we have. Um, equipment contracts, I brought that up to the correct level. Uh, last year, Dana did not put in all the Docstar fees because we have Docstar, which um, we're both Dana and I were using that. And um, that there's this the software for that, the hardware and an annual fee. And we are using it more and more, putting in more and more information. I think I have like Alexa, 20. Alexa, Bluetooth off. Mm -hmm. Hello. I think someone Sorry. To mute their phone or mute their. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, good. So I'll go on with the equipment contracts. That's why it's higher because of the dock star. But like I was saying, we've got like, um, we've got like 20 years worth of minutes in there. We keep building and building information in there. So eventually we'll have more and more. And I think the biggest reason we put it in there was we're running out of space in the vault. That vault is as tight as can be and you cannot add any more paper to it, unfortunately. And then for general expenses, we have got uh, the legal services. I'm gonna leave that at 15,000. I think that that's a reasonable amount. Uh, CPA services, that we have a contract and that contract normally goes up about $500 a year. Plus I put it up a little bit more because we might still have uh, what they call a single audit. And uh, because of what we're going through right now with the sewer commission and uh, paying Turnpike North, I'm not really certain that we'll be completely done with the project in FY21. It might last to FY22, so that's why I'm putting more money for, in for that. 
payroll services, I'm leaving the same. Select board minutes, I'm bringing that down uh, to a more reasonable level. Uh, the emergency generator that we have right now, that generator is a 2008 generator. It still works. Um, and we only, if we need service for it, we call, but it is a 2008. And when we do need service, usually it costs five or $600 to fix each time. So I've left that at the $2,000 level. Uh, tax refund and abatement, abatements, you know, we have no control over that. That's the board of abatement that does. So I put in $5,000 for that, which is usually low, but hopefully it's a reasonable amount. And then miscellaneous general expense, I'm leaving that at $500. So the total that we are looking for for the office is an increase of 1.85%. And I do think we can work on some of the items that are in here, but I was just presenting everything that I have as of now. And you know, if we don't change the computers, then some of those levels will stay with that. So finally, the final part of what I, what I sent to you was the capital expenditure budget. And uh, the capital budget that we, we had last year, $15,000, which we rolled over, um, not anticipating any new tech or equipment type things that we don't already have a reserve for. Highway equipment and structures. To me, $250,000 to set aside every year to try to build something is a minimum. And whether you, you know, if, if you approve that, that'd be great. Whether we change it lower, higher, whatever we do, I just want to have a level in there so we can talk about it because we, we really don't have enough of a buildup for structures and equipment. Uh, police equipment, the police chief has asked me to put in $45,000 for a new police vehicle. And the debt service that I'm showing is just the actual debt service that we have. There's no lowering that at all. I mean, we, we have loans that we have to pay off. So I'm showing overall a 7% increase for the capital expenditure budget. So those are, I've presented all the budgets we have revenue and expenses now for the whole entire town. So I think the next time we wanna go through it, we're gonna to wanna to look at what we, what changes we may wanna make. Okay, thank you, Diane. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. If you have any questions, let me know or email me. I'm good to that. Thank you. Okay, we are over with the uh, the budget prep. Uh, uh, additions and changes to the agenda. Tim Davis won't be with us, and the Fisher Road culvert issue is not going to be on. Um, public comment. Hearing none. Treasurer's report, Diane. Yep. Um, I hope to have the audit report done by this week. I've been in touch with uh, Linda Mullen, who is with Father Gill and Sigali. Uh, she's given me four adjusting entries to make. As far as I know, everything looked good. We were doing fine with it. So I'm really hoping she gives me the final information so that way I have a way, because I am going to really scrutinize it and look at everything. I'm hoping that by our next meeting that she'll be able to, to be part of the meeting as well and we can just go over the budget together. So that's all I had. Um, thank you, Diane. Uh, I don't see uh, the warrants on here. Oops. So we'll have to add that. Um, 815. Oh, yeah, there it is. I see it now. Um, okay, uh, Conservation Commission, uh, illegal tapping on the town forest. Bill? I, I saw Bill join. Here I am, there he unmuted. Is. Thanks, Brad. Uh, sure thing. Yeah, I think, uh, did everyone get copied on our memo to you, to the select board? Okay. They should have. Yes, Phil, went out. Good. All right. Sounds good. Uh, I think I'll let uh, JC speak to this. I think our findings were a little bit surprising. And obviously, we, I think we showed quite a bit of concern in our response. 
Uh, we as a conservation commission would love to get your response as a board, but I think I'll let JC speak to the issue on, on behalf of the board uh, at this point. Hi, everybody. Um, thanks for having us here to speak about this. Uh, so we were um, unable to hire Rose Beatty, as we had talked about in a previous uh, meeting. She uh, has just gotten too busy with regular stuff and two grandkids. So um, we were able to hire uh, um, a gentleman who is a, a state forester out of Northfield, and he's on the Northfield Conservation Commission. So he actually knows the parcel and the parcel boundaries pretty well, which was very helpful and um, he determined uh, that uh, the guy, uh, the gentleman had uh, tapped about 12 acres and um, I'm forgetting the exact number, I don't have it in front of me, maybe you do, it's uh, around a 12, he estimated around 1150 taps is my recollection um, yeah. on, on Berlin town land and um, he had been doing it for two years, two seasons of tapping. Um, and uh, he found it difficult to uh, estimate the, the damage and uh, looking at it from a timber value perspective, which was what we had sort of hoped that he would give us a number because that the law is very clear about uh, damaging timber on other people's parcels. It's, it's, a tr it's treble damages. Um, so uh, we did some calculations on, on what taps the, you know, what a rental fee would have cost. Um, we feel like it would be appropriate for him to pay um, the, you know, at the very minimum should pay for the rentals he didn't pay us, plus our fees involved with a, an attorney and um, the, you know, hiring the forester to go up and inspect the property. Um, you know, plus we do feel as a commission, we agree that, uh, you know, some kind of um, deterrent penalty, which we would, we, our recommendation is to sort of seek the advice of the town attorney to see what uh, their their uh, opinion would be on the matter and what would be sort of appropriate might be the, the way to move forward. But um, the, the, the Conservation Commission feels very strongly that um, we would like to not do what, what Northfield did, which is basically say, Oh, whoops, you tapped on our property. Okay, well, how about you start uh, paying us some money for those taps? I mean, we feel like it, you know, sort of like coming home from from uh, ha having dinner out and somebody's walking out of your living room with your TV and uh, then they offer to pay for it. <laughs> it's a little late. <laughs> so anyways, that's our feeling is, is that uh, we, we'd like him to remove the taps. Um, you know, we'd like it to... We, we, our recommendation would be to turn it over to a, the town attorney and, and see what kind of, uh, you know, negotiated uh, reparations would be appropriate. Did uh, the uh, Forrester, um, so he didn't think he could take and figure out to uh, put it as damage to lumber? You get All he can figure is that they can have uh, the cost per tap? Well, part of, one of the issues Russ found was the ice storm did some damage. Uh, I forget what year it was, 99, maybe after that. He thought it was a little confusing with the damage up there to the trees through natural, that that, that storm we had. I think yeah. we had a couple of storms up there, but. Uh, but. I mean, from talking to Rose Beatty before she even got up there, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a very, it's not, unfortunately, it's not a very, it's a it's a it's a very gray number if, if someone was even able to come up with a timber damage number i mean there's the distance from roads how, how much it costs to get the timber out i mean it's a very difficult it's a difficult thing to calculate um unfortunately so then staying with the the cost per tap would be the easiest way and probably the most co uh, and cost effective I mean, that's, that was one approach we, you know, to do a cost plus on the, on the taps, the, you know, what, what we, what, what we didn't pay for in lease damages plus our costs and, you know, potentially some kind of, you know, it's a little beyond our scope of what would be appropriate, you know, uh, so that's why we're hoping that the select board would choose to, to uh, seek the advice of the town attorney. 
I would think that with that confirmation, it would make sense that unless we have another avenue, don't you, Brad? I don't think we really do have another avenue. I mean, no matter what we're do, what we do, we're going to have to take and talk to Rob about it. So I would say probably just uh, send it over to him. Sure, be glad to. Phil, so, you Phil, the, the Conservation Commission submitted some. Uh, I know it was your estimate of what the renew, uh, what should be due to the town in, in your in your memo. Say that again. He we would like to what? And, um, as part of your original memo, you you had some what you thought the estimated costs were uh, that the town uh, should be reimbursed. Correct. I mean, what we figured in that. Uh, number was once again it was just a, uh, a calculated you know educated guess in the sense that if wholesaling syrup or low retail was $30 a gallon and he made so many gallons for two years off that many taps he probably he probably grossed you know I think the number was seventeen nineteen thousand dollars off just the syrup alone so we had we had added that Tom to the uh, to some numbers, but you know once again we're just making a recommendation here. That's something that Rob Halford or the the select board could decide further that that would be part of the reparation. Uh, that's just another number, but certainly we feel as though that the dollar the dollar number we gave per tap times two years plus fees to settle this matter, uh, you know, would be the minimum. But have maybe, you guys, maybe have you reached out to UVM at all? They have the, the maple department or the maple where they're, they're actually looking at developing forests for the cultivation of maple product versus timber. They might be able to put a really good number on that for us too. I just don't know if anybody's reached no, out. We, have, we, we were kind of using Russ's export expertise given that you know he's been dealing with this for years i think he also i think he extrapolated that because it was probably a vacuum system that he would be possibly getting you know what volume per tap on 1100 taps how many gallons he would have made over two years at anywhere from 30 to a high of i guess 45 or 50 a gallon but you know those are just all ballparks but i don't know if we'd get much more from uvm we could reach out to them if we feel it's necessary, but I also think uh, we would, I, th I think the sooner we get on, on top of this and have him desist and not think he's gonna be sugaring there again for a third season and actually possibly start removing, removing taps. Because the flip side of all this also is, this is a beautiful piece of property we own that we, we wanna discuss it in further length, even tonight on the next, on the next item that you know, the town, it's a natural resource, but it's also a potential recreational resource. And because of that, we certainly don't want tubing and cables and all that crossing any part of our, our town forest that we might want to use. Yeah, I mean, I think that wouldn't the first logical step to be have Rob ask to write him a letter to remove anything from our property. Um, and then maybe reach out to UVM, see if they can be of any additional resource for a monetary determination and also talk to Rob about how we proceed with that at the same time. But first and foremost, get like a cease and desist type letter out there to him. I would love to see a cease and desist letter. I think that's a good starting point. And uh, I didn't reach out to UVM directly. Um, I think they're great on the research side. I did reach out to the county forester um, and he, he said it's a pretty it the, there's the, the, there are some of these cases um a, that have happened in other places and and but it 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 would take quite a bit of legwork to find the foresters that have dealt with people tapping on other people's property it it, it just was a little beyond what i had time to to dig up but um uh and i i think that uh 
from the little I know about UVM and their projects is, is they would be great on the, the research and the Maple side, but I don't think they'd be much help in, in determining damages uh, side. But um, there may be another forester out there that that could give us a better sense. I mean, I, I think that it'd probably be worth circling uh, the town attorney in at this point, just to see if that's worth investing any more money in and if that would, uh, you know, how that would affect how we move forward you know, what kind of numbers we would need and stuff. Because anything that they did up there would be an extrapolation, you know what I mean? They'd basically look at a certain area and they'd extrapolate it over the 12 acres. I mean, how how well that would stand up in, co I mean, I don't know. There's just, if it may be worth doing, but may not. Well, for the most part, any anyone who is, is renting land or trees is, isn't um, they're just renting taps they're not renting uh, potential profit so um, I would just take and stay with the uh, the uh, you know find out what uh, the average price per tap is or the average average rental fee is and uh, give it all to Rob and let him go from there because he certainly should be able to figure I mean uh, come up with a uh, uh, answer for us. Yeah, I think our starting point there was, I think it was a dollar and 29 cents a tap times 1100 taps for two years at a minimum. Yeah. Yeah, plus any other fees we incur in, in settling this matter. Yeah, so I would take in, uh, I would send that information to Rob and uh, uh, then, um, well, if you sent the information to Rob and had him uh, take that and uh, uh, have him uh, uh, put out a cease and desist or whatever right off. Uh, before we do that, anyone on the board have a different idea? Justin? I'm in agreement, Brad. John, okay. Angelina? Yep, sounds good. Flo? Yeah, that's the only Thank you. Uh, didn't hear from Justin. Sounds good. That's what we should do. Okay, there you go, Phil. All right, thanks. Appreciate sure thing. it. Yep. I, I do have a question on this, Brad. Sure. Is, do you want Phil to contact the attorney or do you want Tom to con contract? Probably contact Tom because. Yeah, I'm thinking it should be uh, Tom. All right. Okay. Yeah, if Tom he, needs he'll, any information. He'll respond to Tom. He might not respond to you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Although I served him a lot of dinners over his. Oh, years really? At, okay. At a Maybe single you have an edge. Black door, so he might, might, he might respond to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything else on this, uh, Phil? No, I think that's great. I'll work with Tom if he needs any more information, but I think he has it all in that original memo. Okay, and the next is the vast application for use of town lands. Well, we have, you know, we, from a Conservation Commission standpoint, we're taking kind of a, a broader view. We would love to work with any interested parties on talking about town, town lands and recreation. What we ideally what we'd like to do, and I think we mentioned that in, the, in that memo, is we would like to involve those people in a committee so everyone has uh, a piece of the action, so to speak, by speaking up. In a sense, it's, it would be a, somewhat of a public forum, but we would like to form a steering committee and get, this, get the ball rolling on how to address not only using the land for vast, but uh, kind of getting a a narrower or more defined usage for uh, the mountain bike association and the way they use the land. And just our, our thoughts were to uh, see if the board would consider some sort of steering committee with all interested parties involved to discuss how we move forward because we really don't wanna keep amending or rewriting the management plan. We'd like to kind of get an all inclusive Let's let's address this for once and for all. Given 
the, con the constrictions on meeting in person and COVID and everything, it's a lot of it is gonna be, you know, the way we're doing tonight, emails and Zoom. But, you know, that was our thought. And I think we articulated that in our memo to everyone that we would love to have that as a starting point. There's a lot of finer points to be discussed. And at this, at this juncture, if the, if the board would like to hear more thoughts, Wendy, Wendy on the commission has taken quite the lead on uh, taking a look at not only our agreements with the Vermont Land Trust and all three parcels, and now the town forest too, uh, but she's also, you know, looked over a lot of the vast material, and I think she's got a pretty good handle. Wendy, do you do you want to say something about this at this point? Um, I have. I mean, the memo that we got today gave a lot of information. I think we need to drill down, and I'm not sure whether this is the format for drilling down on it or um, whether we really should get a smaller group together and start, you know, drilling down on some of the details. Um, just from the memo today, I've got about six questions. I've got a question, you know, from um, the initial letter that Dave Rollo um, wrote to us a couple of weeks ago. So there, there's a lot of detail to get into, um, which is one half of it is the detail of, you know, just exactly what it would look like to have bass have a trail up there and what would the maintenance look like and you know more detail what is the cost on the bridge that type of stuff um the other half of it is we still need to um put this out to the public in the same way maybe the town center puts it out to the public and just you know we can do these parallel but um we'd really like to get more feedback from people who may not have an may not be organized enough to know to come and give feedback. We want to solicit that type of feedback and see what people are thinking and what they want to do with the town property. I, I think Wendy, we I do have information on the bridge. Yeah. Okay. I think we should go yeah. ahead, you know, Wendy, and um, maybe after Josh speaks, you could ask your questions, but I think Josh may, um, may, you know, have some information that you're looking for just okay. based on the conversation I had with him earlier. Okay, yeah, that'd be great. Um, what I've done is gone and um, cutting the material list together for what the bridge is gonna take for the upgrading and to get the, the wider width. And it, the material cost and with a gate and everything was gonna be about $2,700. And so talking with the rest of the members of the snowmobile clubs, we would donate all the labor for free and then just turn the bridge over to the town. So the, ta the conservation board would pay for the materials. We'd use the bridge along with everybody else throughout the winter, but, but the snowmobile trails are only open from December 15th to April 15th. And, mm -hmm. and we don't get to, there's not snow on the ground that whole time. As you can see, we're, right. the snowmobile trails won't even be open this year at this, on December 15th. So we were hoping that maybe we could work out a deal with you guys on, on the bridge part there. And I think the other information with the um, um, management plan kind of covers everything you would need from us on what we would do. We wouldn't change any, anything on the trail that's there now, other than just cutting the brush back a little wider just for safety issues. So, you know, when people are riding their snowmobile, they're not getting slapped in the face by a branch or... You know, so we would we would be looking to having roughly about a 10 foot wide trail, but we'd clear it to about 12 feet wide so that the brush would stay back. And, that, and, and I don't mean clear, it would just be kind of cleaning up and maintaining it. And, 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 and by going up there, I see like all the water bars and everything are all still working very well, but we would take on the responsibility of keeping the water bars you know, all maintained and any other issues that come up along the trail air portion of the property. You know, we wouldn't want to take on, and, and we would volunteer to help you guys doing other projects up on the mountain, but um, we wouldn't want to take on being responsible for mountain bike damage and, you know, other damages that were going to be up there. We would definitely take care of our people. And I would say our mess, but really we don't make a mess doing this. You know, there's a few 
soda bottles maybe sometimes, but a lot of the members, when they drive by and see a soda bottle in the trail, they stop and pick it up because it's, we know it's a fragile system and with uh, 4,700 miles of trail in the state of Vermont, you must understand that it's a pretty good group of people. Yeah, I know that you do a lot of work. I mean, a tremendous amount of work in the state of Vermont. Um, just um, a question on the bridge. Does that bridge, is it going to need some design work and abutment work? Um, I mean, as a matter of fact, I called um, Pat Ross from uh, Agency of Natural Resources today, and I'm going to meet with him on Thursday at one o'clock. And we're going to go over, we're going to walk up to the bridge on uh, Darling Road. And we're also going to go over the bridge on um, Black Road that we need, that the bass would need to put in on the class four section of Black Road. So we're going to go over and we'll be go by all his standards. And, it, and it's a pretty well standardized thing that they have with bass. It's not the first time they're building bridges and they know what they're doing, you know, and we all know what we're doing. And Pat Russ, what's his, he's with? Uh, Agency of Natural Resources. Okay, what's his, what's his job there? I'm sorry? What, what you is, know, is I'm he? Not a... sure. I, I'm not sure what his actual position is called. I think it has River Conservator, Conservancy. Okay, he's like the river manager type person. Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. As far as I know, Wendy, that's his position. Okay, he does the permitting. Um, yes. Okay. Yeah, and he'll come up and look at it and say, no, you can't do it, or no, you need to do this, or, you know, he'll just give us the guidelines on what we need to follow, and then I'm sure there would be a follow-up inspection after. So, so okay. Josh, um, yes. So, Josh, what you're saying is the local clubs would take on that responsibility to make sure to work it through the state system so we, so the Conservation Committee wouldn't have to do anything there. It Correct. would really just be that $2,700 in materials at the end the town of Berlin would own the bridge. Correct. And, and then the uh, snowmobile club would actually maintain the bridge as well. Yep. And you would, put a, gate up, and, and you would put a gate up to uh, mitigate concerns of bigger vehicles going up there when it's off season? Yep, absolutely. And it, as a matter of fact, on the other end, on the Northfield side, one of the uh, property owners there um, are requiring us to put a gate up on that end too. So that's going to block off access from uh, the Northfield side as well. Where is the Northfield side? I'm, I'm unclear on where this trail is taking. Where, the, Northfield, the Northfield property line is right at the end of the Berlin Town Forest. I think he's asking Northfield. where the where the gate's going to be. Oh, uh, the, uh, maybe you can come go in on that one, Steve, on where the gate would have to be. I think it was the Linga property is where it was going to go on. That is correct. Uh, the, the gate will be at the top of Zalinga, which meets the old poor farm. Uh, it'll be a gate that crosses, you know, the complete trail so no vehicles can go through. And, and also, um, I'll, I can say that we, we would put up a lot of signage as well about making sure people stay on the trail and it's private property. And, and uh, like I said, some of the other, other than the Berlin Town Forest is private property and people are just gracious enough to let the snowmobile trail go through, but they don't want um, mountain bikers. They don't want skiers and hikers and any, any of that stuff on their property. So we're gonna have to sign that property that it's uh, private property and snowmobile use only. And um, do you have a, a map from Darling? Um, from the Darling Trail to um, Northfield so we can see exactly where this trail is going? Because I'm not we, really clear where it's going once it leaves the town forest. We, we haven't done that yet, Wendy. We were kind of working through this stuff with the conservation board to get permission. We've, we've kind of like spooky walked through and found our way through. And so we were kind of waiting for the green light from you guys to go up and then we would ribbon it and then get approval from you where it is. Another thing about that is um, this, the, the tapping of all the trees up there, that really kind of pushed us into where we were putting the trail now. We would much rather have the trail up where those sh the sugar lines are that's on the town forest, which- Well, there's an existing trail there as opposed to building the new trail. I mean, that's- 
you, you know, and where we found also, Wendy, is an existing trail as well, where, um, where they had logged previously up there. We stayed right on an area where we would have to cut very few trees and that the very few trees were going to be right about at the Berlin town forest border where it borders uh, Northfield. Other than that, it's just little saplings growing up. So are you saying the border is with the Northfield town forest? Uh, nope. It's a border with a private landowner. It's a, um, uh, Carol Brisson is the, is the, private landowner that borders where we were going to cross into Northfield is on Carl Brisson's property. Okay. We weren't going on to the, on the bridge that you're Morris talking. I, I'm still not really clear where the trail is. Yeah, I'm not either. I'm looking at my ox map right now and I don't see any names like that on any of the surrounding parcels. Okay, well, it, it, that's, that's the guy. We've, we've contacted him and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so and, that, and that's the guy. I, I mean, I remember seeing the maps you guys drew of the town uh, forest land and the 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 ridge the ridge line uh, parcel, and it and it was very clear that you were following the existing ridge line trail, and then and then it was a little unclear to me where it crossed the town forest land. But th that's okay. great to hear that you found a, a map that I mean a road. I mean, the, so my one question is: is if the the lines were uh, brought back to where they were supposed to be? I mean, our preference would be that you followed continued along the, I think, the, 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 ta the, the ridgeline trail, because that's already pretty heavily impacted and, and would require less, less impact. Uh, yeah. would, it, would you have permission if you were, would, could you continue along the ridgeline trail or not? We could, but it, there, there's a lot more construction involved on that trail. There's a, there's a, there'd be quite a few trees that would need to come down along that area to get a 10 foot wide um, trail through there. Um, I don't know um, where uh, where you guys where I met up with you, Wendy, when you guys were checking the trees, where we are, you're checking the taps on the trees yeah. was pretty close to where we were going to be cutting down over the hill. And, and that's actually private property that's owned by this guy in Williamstown. And um, so you were, right there, oh, we're, we're going to cut the down from the cell tower property. It would be really helpful to have a map. Um, okay. Because we're all sort of talking about stuff that we had to. Yeah, that'd be great. We're not sure. Well, well is it, I mean, what, I mean, what, what's the big issue with where it really goes with you guys? Why, why was it, why is it different up there? What difference does it make as long as we're, I think up on the ridge line there, we're impacting the land a lot more. Well, part of the problem is that we've got, um, state highest priority land in there. Um, so if you look at the um, a &R map or you look at um, BioFinder, the state map, you'll notice that um, we've, there's a large section in there that is actually um, rich hardwood forest and it's rated highest priority by the state right now. Um, so we would like to be involved in where the trail goes because that area may have sense of, um, you know, plants that need to be protected. It may have, we don't know. I mean, we really yep. haven't surveyed it. Yep. Um, so How about you know, knowing where the trail would go allows us to sort of look and see, you know, what are the plants, what, what's there? Sure. How about if we get up there and try to ribbon that after that it's still muzzleloader uh, uh, deer hunting season this yeah. week. And so how about right after that, if the weather permits, um, a couple of us from the snowmobile club get up there and uh, ribbon, a, li ribbon the way through. And then I could contact you and let you know when it's, um, it, when, when it meet you, you know, we would do it. And then I can meet you, Wendy, or meet other People's on the conservation It'd be good to have board. more than just me up there. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. And, and we can walk through. Would it make sense to try and ribbon that with the conservation committee there? Well, we got some, we got some more um, um, maneuvering around a little bit because of the uh, people that own the land that butt up to the that butt up to the cell tower. There's a camp down. If you if you go down past the cell tower, there's a camp right down below there. 
And those people own uh, about 30 acres there, 26 acres there. And so right. we are using some of their property and they said that they could use our property, but they wanted us to go around, go, go around. So we weren't going by their camp. So that, was, and they showed us where to go. So it was going to be a little, a little more legwork up there to cut down to, onto the uh, town forest where we have already, you know, found the trail. Mm -hmm. But no. Josh, the, the, the town forest piece, you guys could ribbon that. That's the, that's the part that the conservation committee would like to be a part of, right? Uh, I mean, once you get onto private land, the conservation committee is, it's kind of out of bounds for them. I mean, th at least sure. that's, that's what I'm thinking. I mean, conservation committee speak up if a, out of place. Oh, you're, you're correct. No. no, you're correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, no, that would be so, no so problem. So you're in, uh, ribbon me... below the ridge then instead of up it's where the below the ridge. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. See, my only comment is, is, is that the, high, the, the more of a logging road it already is, the, the less impact it's going to have on smaller, you know, on, on the, because there's a lot of, it doesn't look like, might not look like much, but there's, in the rich hardwood forest, there's a lot of small plants that are of, of significance ecologically and part of the ecosystem. So it, yep. it might not look like much, but it, it, it'd be our preference to keep it on okay. our already heavily impacted road systems. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty concerned about going down below the ridge. Um, we've already stacked out the mountain bikers from, from that. Um, so, it, it it would be worth it would be worth giving people just the 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 mountain bike association came to us with a proposed plan that went through a rich hardwood section of the forest and they were turned down so uh anyways we just have to be a little bit delicate to to turn down one group of people and then and then the green light yeah, another approve thing. another I, I agree i agree um we're more of a straight line through than a zigzag you know our trail will be a half a mile where they, they go a half a mile and it's really like five miles the way they zigzag through N and nothing against their trail system either, you know, and, and AI and also, um, you know, we're, we've got a lot of work involved in this now, and I don't want to involve like other entities into this, you know, this is the snowmobile club. We will, you know, allow whatever on those trails that the conservation board wants on there. But I think that our plan that we have given you is pretty thorough for what we need to use for the land. So I guess also from our perspective, you know, that was one of the reasons we were talking about doing a more comprehensive um, plan, bringing you in with other people who also want to do trails up there. We've got limited amount of land up there. Um, you know, and if we can have them used by more than, you know, one group with that would be preferable than, you know, snowmobiles have their group, their trail, the bikers have their trails. Um, and it would be shared and it, it would definitely be shared in areas for sure. And, and, you know, and we plan on seeing bikes on that trail in the winter time and snowshoers and skiers and hikers. And, you know, we, we definitely plan on seeing that and that happens all over the state where um, people open up their private property, but they say, well, we want you to, we want to be able to ski on this trail and the snowmobile club is fine with it. You know, it's just like they put up signs, caution skiers and trail, you know, and the speed limit is low. And I guess from my perspective, and I don't know what the other parts of the conservation commission feel about it, but I would prefer to upfront, you know, say to the mountain bikers, say to these other folks, um, you know, this trail is being proposed, is this going to work for you also, you know, so we can get something that works for everybody. Um, and I guess that was part of what we were talking about of, you know, looking at the management plan as, you know, collaborative effort among everybody who's going to be using using the trails up there. Uh, we've got a lot of sensitive habitat and, you know, it looks like there's a lot of land, but there's really not as much land as it appears. You know, when you see that um, snowmobile trail in the summertime, you wouldn't even know there was a, a snowmobile on there in the wintertime. We really have no impact on the land whatsoever. 
Um, the plants all still grow. Any work that we do, we seed and mulch. And so you, you really can't, it's, it's very hard to even tell that there's a snowmobile trail, trail there in the summertime. Josh, are, are there other conservation areas that VAS goes through right now in the state? Oh, yes, there is. Actually, the, the Berry Town Forest they go through, actually. And that's a conserved property. And actually, Dave Rulo, he would be at this meeting, but he's, um, he's um, president of the um, rec, rec board in, in Berry Town. So he's in, in a meeting with them tonight. That's why he's not uh, sitting in tonight. Right, but that, that's not a, a high priority, highest priority state. We're, we're talking more of rich hardwood forests as opposed to conserved land. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're talking about what's national communities are in habitat. So that's a different system. Uh, we can't hear you, Wendy. Wendy, you cut out. I'm just saying that what's going on in the Berrytown Forest is not natural communities, which is what we have going on up at the ridge. Um, it, it's a little okay, different. Yeah. No, I'm sure I, Dave no, could speak to other areas in the state where they, I'm sure that even if Berrytown wasn't, I'm sure they're familiar with other areas that are. Um, and I mean, I don't know Barry Towns Forest, it sounds like you might, Wendy, but. Uh, I'm a little bit familiar with it. Yeah, I mean, I'm just assuming that they would understand it. Um, they work with it. They, they, they would absolutely be familiar with dealing with scenarios like that and how to be, you know, environmentally friendly, ecologically friendly, whatever. I think, I think what we as a board are, are trying to emphasize here is not so much, Josh, that we think there's going to be a lot of damage left behind after snowmobiling in the winter months. I think what okay. we're trying to determine here is a fair and equitable way to uh, revisit the land management plan, including VAST, MUMBA, other, other concerned parties. So we have, for the, for, the, for the sake of the town, we have something, you know, a real strong blueprint that when more questions come up in the future, we have answers instead of having to go to the well and, you know, drawing up a new document with each person. Now, I'm not saying we don't want, we don't want to necessarily, we, we're not trying to impede the movement of VAST in any way, we're just trying from our perspective as a board, we're trying to make sure that let's not do the homework two or three times. And, uh, you know, I, I know, that, I know we, you want to expedite the process as quickly as possible. And I certainly understand the reasons why, but we as a board are just, you know, as a commissioner feeling like, you know, this, I'm glad this came up. I'm glad VAST has approached this. I think we want to get something done here, but I also think, from our perspective, there are other there are other players out there in the community that we maybe we haven't heard from, and uh, I we want to keep moving forward, but we also want to make sure we're doing our due diligence. And well, I think I, I, I think that their management plan would be different than our management plan. I, I I don't know if you can have the whole scope together. I think that the management plan from the snowmobile club would be different than the management plan from the biking from uh, Mamba. You know, oh yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying it would be a management plan that, I mean, obviously each, each recreation or each use of the land would probably have different parameters. We're just saying from an overall, we're revisiting the plan and having to go back to the Vermont Land Trust to make sure that uh, our agreement on those two parcels where they're party to, that they also are in agreement with everything we do. Yeah, uh, you know, no, and we, us too. Us, yeah, us too, Phil. Yeah. What okay, do you think? So, um, uh, so um, you know, like I said, we'd like to maybe go and ribbon the trail, but we're kind of getting off track now with Wendy wanting us to maybe go right along the ridge line. When we would be happy to go right up there along the ridge line and do the trail there. Um, but it, but it would be more impact. I mean, you, you guys know that know that trail where we wouldn't even really have to ribbon that trail then, because you guys are familiar with that trail. Mm -hmm. Right. So we could so so what we'd be looking for is just like a uh, uh, a green light to go up and and do our work that we would need to do, which is actually uh, it's actually going to be a lot more work going up that way than the way we had found. But we have no problem. I mean, there's a beautiful trail up through there through the ridge line there it's just going to be um 
a little more work around the ledge and stuff that's there in the in the bigger trees. Does it present a problem because of the steepness and a few? A few There's spots? a few spots. There is a few spots um, where the steepness is, but it's um, it's more off of Berlin Town Forest. It's beyond and onto um, onto the old poor farm property, onto uh, Tim Sample's property, Tim which Sample. where the yeah. where the the sugaring guy has has gone onto his property too. Out of curiosity, did he go out of that property with permission or, or or not? He did not. He has not got permission. And actually, I brought it uh, to their attention that my, I knew that the, the, the uh, town was in litigation with this guy. And that and I did let um, samples know that, that their property is being encroached upon by this by the sugar maker. So I, I, I might have misspoken earlier. I, I mean, I, I do think it's worth flagging the, your proposed trail. And okay. uh, we, are, we already know where the mix line trail is. And, uh, you know, just to, then we can go up and take a look at both options and, and give yeah. you feedback and, and suggest. So I, I misspoke if I led you to believe that. Um, and I think that uh, you guys have had other meetings. I think that uh, we just have to, that there has to be a, a town management plan that goes to the land trust because of their interest in the, in the three parcels, I believe. So for for any anything like this to happen legally, do you uh, have a plan? Do you have a plan right now with the uh, with Mamba for the trails that are up there existing now? Do you have a, a, a plan from them? They maintain just the mountain bike trails that they built. Um, are you are you talking about the Ridge Trail? Do we have a plan? no no just the just the mountain bike trails that are on town property? They're on the town forest. And they're actually on some of the Lawson property and on some of, you know, some of the other property up there. Well, yeah. I mean, the, 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 uh, the, there's not, there's not the kind of, uh, first of all, we aren't requiring the, the mama to come up with a plan as a, as a commission, we go to Vermont land trust with a plan and there has, it, it's not been as, as well managed as it, as it should be. So yep. there's, there's been a lack of, of uh, proper communication already. So, you know, mm -hmm. we're trying to, we're trying to get on the right foot rather than keep going forward on the wrong foot. So, yeah. Anyway. Well, um, BAST is a, is an established uh, club that's been established for over 50 years in the state of Vermont. So, oh, yeah, uh, we, yeah we I, I, I really don't think we we have any qualms about the legitimacy of vast or wanting to support them or recreation. We just, you know, it's been less than a year. We've taken it slow. We, we've been, you know, uh, you know, our role as a commission is to just why eyes wide open and make sure we have input from everyone, including, you know, our goal is a conservation is to make sure the natural resources for all these hundreds of acres up there are being protected in the right way. And let's add recreation. Yeah, Which sure. We all, we all agree with COVID and everything going on. We, everyone I think is on the same page here. We want people outdoors. We want people experiencing, you know, exercise, the beauty of outdoors, the landscape we have. We're just, we're just the stewards of it. So we're just being, you might, you know, sure. I don't, I don't want you to think we're a roadblock. We're just being uh, stewards of, no. Nope. And you I know, appreciate that, Phil. What we're trying to do. No, I appreciate well, what you do. What you, think, go ahead. what you're going go to ahead, have Brad. to do. Yeah, Phil. Um, so basically what has to be done is um, to uh, get the trail or get eyes on the trail where the where Vast thinks it wants it to go and uh, see if you can... Uh, come to a compromise with them to uh, get a trail there that will uh, benefit uh, the conservation committee um, push for recreation and also for a vast uh, desire to go through there. Is that right? Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. Um, we're getting a little long also... on this subject. Yeah, so uh, so one, one more quick thing, if I could. Sure, go ahead. Um, I was wondering if we could get approval from uh, conservation board about the deal for the bridge. It, for the, it, would, um, be the, would they... it would be the town select board, Josh. Okay. There, I'm, I'm not I'm not saying that the conservation committee shouldn't weigh in. I'm just saying that it's a town yep. property that 
just right. so that we will know so that we will know what we're up against here you know if we can maybe start working on that bridge because we have another bridge we have to do also on black road which um i was going to try to talk with a uh, select board with about tonight the uh trail that you already have or the roads that you have open um black road and brookfield road there's um there's just a small bridge on black road now that's actually really deteriorated and unsafe and um, we we're wondering if we could maybe go forward with a bridge there. May I ask a question about yeah, the bridge on behalf of the fire department? Yep. Are those bridges going to be sufficient to be able to have, say, a um, one of those side-by-side six-wheeled ATVs get across it wide enough and heavy enough? That absolutely will. Okay. Yep. And what about we're going to make them 10, uh, 10 feet wide. They'll be 10 feet wide. And they will carry about, they'll ca you know, and they'll carry uh, about a fifteen thousand pound vehicle. Okay. It, you know about what the um, uh, grooming machines. Oh, okay. And yep. what about what about those gates? Where are the gates going to be installed in relation to Darling Road and the the parking lot? Well, that would be something I think we'd go over with the conservation board where they would like to see them. Whether we just go with the boulders that that have yeah. been working throughout. But which, but those are in the way for you guys to get up yeah. there. The reason um, I ask, the reason I ask is we had two calls this summer. One was a uh, brush fire, and the other one was a injury on the mountain bike trails. And the between the boulders and that the bridge, bridge. being sufficient, it cost us about half an hour of time and being able to get that patient to the hospital. Yeah, yeah. Um, we should definitely uh, make it much easier for you. The only thing is, is a, it would be like the key. You know what we would do whether it be a combination lock or a key we could work that out but i'm definitely interested in being able to have the fire department and the ambulance get better access to that area yeah and same with us too we knew that was an issue and and we were kind of hoping that you would be on our side with this too okay yeah i think it's definitely a public safety issue after i saw how long it took to get that person off the mountain mountain this summer yeah um, that was we definitely have to do something there. I think, you know, a, a partial bridge so you can still get uh, mountain bikers and hikers and everything up, but keep bigger vehicles off from it when they're not supposed to be is really important. Mm -hmm. So I see yeah. two, two actions here that we, that we need to follow up on that are part of this agenda. One is uh, re-signing the permission form to allow VAST to go down Crosstown Road uh, which they had last year. And the second piece is at um, uh, um, allowing the, as, as long as we're all in agreement that, you know, af, as we work through the details, there will be a vast trail going up through there that we allow uh, vast and uh, the approval of $2,700 for of conservation funds to be used for a new bridge. And that way, as weather permits, we can build the new bridge and uh, get things rolling there. Well, either either way, the, the bridge should be fixed, um, whether it's um, uh, not to have access for uh, safety vehicles up there is, is um, pushing our... Yep. And uh, so is there any more on this for right now? Um, just one more thing. Um, Phil had hit on about, I'm um, having public comment on, um, you know, getting more people involved on what's going on there. Well, I took it upon myself there a week or so ago and uh, took a few days and went around talking with my neighbors just so I wasn't going to cause any trouble in the neighborhood about having a trail go through. And uh, within, you know, five or six hours, I got over 100 signatures from uh, friends and neighbors, you know, uh, Berlin residents. Um, stating, you know, I, I put at the top of the paper, as a Berlin resident, I think the town should open certain areas on back roads as well as certain areas in the Berlin town forest on Irish Hill to reestablish a snowmobile trail linking Berlin corners with the Northfield trail system. And, and like I say, within, within a few hours, I had over 100 signatures on, on, uh, on like a petition. I, I wasn't even looking for a petition. I was mainly looking for input from my neighbors so that I wasn't causing... Josh, yeah, Josh, are all these people Berlin residents? They're all Berlin residents. And you did this by yourself? Did this you by myself. Signatures? Wow. 
And that was, and, and I could go with more. I had other people that I could have gone and seen. When I got a hundred, I was like, hopefully this will be enough to let them know that, you know, if other people are interested in this. So we as a conservation commission that would like to open it up to the whole town. Um, this is it, our, this is our fourth meeting that's been publicly warned. How would you like to open up to the town, Wendy? Well, when, okay, so when they did the road diet down on 302, um, they actually held a meeting that was well advertised um, for people to come and talk about it. They put out a survey. I got two, two or three surveys on that. Um, you know, if I wasn't on the Conservation Commission, I would not have known that this was being discussed, I guess. Um, And the process that other towns have gone through as far as rewriting their management plan um, has been, you know, putting news articles out, putting things out on the website, putting, um, you know, front page forum, letting people really know that we're going to discuss recreation on town property and inviting a lot of people in and, you know, providing different you know, people who don't have access to computers, they have a different, um, maybe they fill out a, a survey, maybe they, you know, call or write a letter, but give people, everybody, give everybody the opportunity to weigh in on this um, and weigh in on all the recreation, you know, weigh in on, you know, the people who like to ski, the people who like to snowshoe, right. um, you know, the people who, you know, everybody weighs in. So, so if people don't like the hikers on on the trail anymore, then they can weigh in too. Uh, I, I yeah, guess I mean, it's yeah, it's but the idea is, you know, the two biggest things that you're managing when you're on a town force is um, recreation versus the natural resources, and the other is user conflict. Um, you know, different users um, needing to share the same resource. In other towns, one of the ways they have done it is um, put out a trail alliance where you've got a member from Bass there, you've got a member from the bike club there, you've got, you know, members, um, you know, hikers, you've got skiers, you've got everybody there and everybody works out together how they're going to share the land. And, you know, if there's, you know, people sharing trails, what, what does that look like? And you address, you know, potential conflicts up front instead of um, waiting to see what's going to happen and then having to address them. So it's just a matter of whether you approach this from the from the front end or whether you approach it from the back end. Well, this um, happens all over the state, Wendy, and I don't know if they go through that detail to have this happen. You know, we're going to have a trail that goes up through where there's an existing trail, and if people want to ski and they wanna make their own tracks, they don't even have to be on the snowmobile portion trail. They can be beside it and making their own tracks or a snowshoer wanting to make their own tracks through the woods somewhere. Um, you know, this happens I, I, all I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing other members of the community besides Vast here. I'm... It's, been, it's been in the paper. It's been warned in four different meetings. I mean, short of sending something in everyone's tax bill, uh, you know, I think I think Josh just showed with 100 signatures and what he says was a few hours shows overwhelming support, at least me as a select board member. That's what it's showing me right now. And the only people I'm hearing, um, I wouldn't say opposition, but, you know, the, a, a long drawn out process of including every potential user group out there and and soliciting and and pushing for comments, it is the three or four people here from the conservation committee. I agree. It does feel um, as though I know you guys have spoken that you're positive and support of the trail, but I feel like we're trying to get something put together for residents that strongly support this for this, this coming season, if at all possible, as well as to um, fix a, a known issue with the potential safety hazard of the bridge along with emergency access. Um, I think you're always going to run into this group, that group there, you know, everybody's going to have conflicting uses. Um, but I do feel 
as though the, the, the we're being stalled here in the process because I think it's it's I think we're making something too complex when it's actually much simpler. That's just my input. Does there need to be any sort of uh, signed agreement between parties between town and vast or anything like that as we proceed just, forward? Just the just think. the permission slip that we sent into the town. We sent a permission form into uh, Tom uh, Badowski. Um, it, it's just a, a, a normal, um, what every landowner signs, it has our insurance information on it and it has a place, place for notes. If you wanted to put in, make sure you put a gate on the bridge, make sure this happens by this date. Um, uh, Tom Badowski has that form that just really needs a, a signature from a town administrator. Are you feeling as though the, the bridge is a, uh, a project that could be done this season? I am feeling that. Yes, as long as the weather stays the way it is, and it looks like it's going to warm up. And after I talk with um, uh, Pat Ross on Thursday, I can uh, give you more information. And Phil, if you would like to meet, I'm meeting him um, right at the right where everybody um, parks to walk around the pond. I'm meeting him right there at one o'clock on Thursday, and then we're going to walk up, walk up to, um, or you know, go up to Darling Road, walk up to that bridge. And then we're going to go to Black Road and look at that bridge. So if someone from the Conservation Board wants to uh, be in on that uh, meeting, that would be fine. I think someone probably will. I mean, we'll, we'll discuss it, but we'll try to get someone there for sure. Okay. It seems like it's, yeah, it would be a, a contact. I'd like, you know, to meet someone from ANR, I think is important at this point. Sure. You, know, you get their eyes on it. Sure. As, as far as this management plan, we... Oh, JC, were you saying something? Yeah, I, just, just, I just want to clarify for, for, for one uh, briefly, and I know we've talked about this, is um, the it, it would be a very different conversation if the Vermont Land Trust didn't have easements on three of these parcels. If these were just town-owned parcels straight up with no interest, then you know there would be no conversation here. The Vermont Land Trust is is wants this kind of process that we're talking about to happen on the parcels that they have easements over. That's what they want to see happen when things are proposed to them. So we're, we're not trying to like stall things. We're not trying to go slow. They have a very, the, the process that Wendy's talked about is actually abbreviated from what they would like to see. Now, would people, you know, show up to meetings? I don't know. But I think that I just wanted to clarify that that's where it's coming from is trying to honor the Vermont Land Trust interest in the three parcels. I think it's perfectly reasonable to have a public hearing, um, schedule it 30 days out like we would for anything else and hold that public hearing. But I guess, you know, you know, and I don't think Wendy necessarily meant it this way, but when the, the, the way she explained it, it sounded like, you know, it was the ideal scenario where it was gonna, you know, be a year or two long process like we're developing yeah. a town center, right? No, I'm looking more, I'm not looking at a town center thing. I'm just saying, you know, a real, you know, make an attempt at least to get a wide variety of people to weigh in. Yeah, I think we should do a, a true public hearing 30 days out and that gives, you know, everyone plenty of yeah. notice. That's what we would do for anything else. And it, do does, that. That, does that meet the, re, you know, your, your thoughts, Wendy? Yeah, I mean, usually what they do is that, and they do a survey. Um, you know, so you know, so a person who can't show up at a Zoom meeting has another alternative. Um, you know, there's some alternatives, and we're working, you know, during a pandemic, which makes it a little bit more challenging right now. When I was well, in the town clerk's can... office, and I read read about the agreement that you have with Vermont Land Trust on those parcels, it it it, it maybe I'm just assuming, but they seem to approve whatever we wanted or, or whatever the town wanted they just wanted a management plan it wasn't like they needed to have a public hearing and everybody weighs in which i, I don't care which is fine but I, I think you're reading into that way too deep oh no it, it, it they do require a public hearing it's in the easement okay we have follow-up emails from the Vermont land trust <laughs> okay yeah, it's, it's in the easement if you read carefully pretty explicitly so uh, we're not trying well, to well, I like. I, I thought I, John's a suggestion is a good one. Yeah, let's um, do that, John. Yeah, let's do that.
us do it and uh, let's see who shows up and, and you know. Now, will that be something? If nobody that, shows up, nobody cares. Then we will go. That be go something, on. Brad. Will that will, will you do that, Brad? As a select board, you want to just will will the select board post uh, some thirty days from we'll, now hearing? We'll put a we'll take and have a hearing on. Um, I don't have a calendar in front of sure. me. Sure. We'll take and get a hearing scheduled, um, and then we can uh, uh, make sure everybody, the conservation commission and uh, the rest of the. Uh, uh, people can have a um, have their say, but uh, again, it's uh, it's um, it's hard to get people to do these things, know. <laughs> you know, to show up. Right. So, 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 Brad, that meeting, that meeting would be January fourth, and we do it probably just prior to the select board meeting, right? Probably, yeah, because I can't see it taking more than a half hour. No, right. No, I no. think. 6 30 january 4th I, I i would like to make sure it's a full 30 days out i think that's the requirement for a lot of yeah. public hearings and i i just want to mm. follow and being consistent with you know the rules of january 4th. those type of public so hearings might be better off to take and schedule for january the 18th that would give us an extra two weeks to get the notice out and everything else with with that being said um select board uh, is there any opposition to signing the um, the road openings that we have already uh, agreed to in the past? One of them uh, being Crosstown Road and the other one being the Black Road, uh, Brookfield Road that we uh, voted on a few weeks ago. Bass just needs their permission form signed. And I think that was warned on the agenda. So we should be able to move forward with that if there isn't any major opposition. The signs and, and are bridge, already up. And, and bridge work as well. If we could get started on the bridge work, that was uh, the, definitely idea. the Darling Hill bridge really needs work. It's in right. bad, bad shape. I, I just want to take a one action item at a time, Josh, because yeah. I think uh, that one's going to have a little bit more discussion. But um, so was that a motion or what? Well, no, I'm, I, yeah, I was <laughs> straw poll. It was me making a motion. I was straw Are you looking for a consensus here or what? Yeah. Josh, or uh, yeah. excuse me, Justin. I agree. Yeah. So do you want to make a motion, Justin, to approve uh, the applications for the roads? I'll make a motion that we approve the applications for the roads for the vast, the existing trails uh, or the existing approvals and that we sign the uh, landowner permission slip for the Crosstown Road section, uh, the Brookfield Road section, the Black Road section. And was there any others that we needed? No, not that I'm aware of. We hear a second. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Okay. Um, so the second, the second item, Brad, not to be a pain in the butt, <laughs> was, <laughs> was, the, was the bridge piece, which you know, Josh asked about. Do and I'm interested in the conservation board's uh, opinion here. Do we do we want to uh, approve using um, only about half of what we originally approved the conservation committee to use uh, five thousand, like the twenty seven hundred dollars, and allow uh, the vast community, uh, the vast local clubs, um, to build. Uh, a, a right-sized bridge there that would allow both emergency services, potential vast use, but it would be town-owned and be a safer bridge for the the current traffic on the mountain. Yeah, I don't. I don't certainly have a problem with that. I'm, if maybe you have a genie in a bottle, I can't believe twenty-seven hundred dollars will do it. But I would. I would say that's about exactly what we were looking at before, and that was only a four-foot-wide bridge. So. Or five foot. Uh, yeah, you I know, think and this is all contingent on our meeting with uh, Pat Ross. Right. Yep. Right. Yep. So, um, I guess we can squeak that under the vast application for town lands. Uh, so, a motion on the bridge. I. I make a motion to allow up to $3,000 
Um, Thanks, to, John. To, to, to <laughs> just in case, to <laughs> replace uh, the existing uh, bridge at the beginning of the Irish Hill Trail uh, with a um, wider uh, bridge that meets public safety and recreational uh, standards. Second. Any further comment? I don't know, John, about the, um, I would just take it, I don't know about the standards. I don't think there are any standards. Yeah, I, I don't well, there know. Is, there's railing height standards and stuff that yeah. um, the a and will bring up, bring up to us. There's like a 44 inch rail height standard and there's certain yeah. standards for sure. And, and for public safety for a six by six or whatever, you need a certain, you know. Um, Weight carrying capacity. Yeah. Correct, yeah. Well, of course, for the six by six or, or any emergency vehicles, I mean, uh, a trail groomer, if they're using a piston bully or anything like that, that's going to weigh, you know, close to 12,000 anyway. So, yes, I don't think they're going to take in. I don't think you have to worry too much about the, the bridge holding a uh, any kind of emergency vehicle. OK, all those in favor. Aye. 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 Motion carries. And. Thank you all. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Sorry Thanks, about taking Ed. up all the time. And uh, now, um, moving on to the Berlin Volunteer Fire Department. Thank you. Have a good night. Hi, Jeff. Hey. Uh, thank you, guys, for hearing us. Uh, what we have tonight uh, primarily is our uh, presentation of our annual budget for FY22 to go up for the uh, town meeting day vote. And um, at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Joe Staub, the corporation president who uh, is the uh, chief architect, shall we say, on a lot of this. <laughs> so. Oh, thank you, Keith. Um, uh, let me ask. I, I think everybody got a copy of this. Is that true? Okay. So if, if we move to the, I'll just kind of go down through and, and talk about some of the, the high points and, and we, I'll answer any questions maybe, I guess, at the end. Um, so if we went to like the page two with the income and the line items there, uh, facility rental, will be going up almost $4,000 for an income. And that's gonna be um, primarily Barry Town EMS who, who rents space there at the Four Corners station. Um, and some of the other uh, income there as far as like miscellaneous or various fundraisers um, and donations, we, we kind of adjusted those to be more in line what was um, more realistic. Um, so we do see a, a decrease in some of those. Um, there is no other real change down through the administrative expenditures. That's all staying the same as well with the exception of, sorry, I didn't see that, um, the accounting. So Batch Elders um, is doing our accounting and we did have an audit done um, and, and I apologize, I should be getting a couple copies out to, to you guys review um, but the accounting um, portion of the of that has, has been brought down five thousand um, dollars and going down through to um, the insurance is, is virtually staying the same um, and the retirement benefits are staying the same now I want to just kind of point out um, on FY20 is, is if we look at the insurance and how the insurance was actually the line item was 30,500 and FY20 it, we have the actual of 39,200 change. Um, and if we look directly below that at the retirement portion is we had 18,000 18, for retirement, but yet only 1,100 um, and change on the actual. What we ran into is, um, I think, just some bad communication and bookkeeping 
with um, maybe our treasurers and also batch elders. Um, I believe that insurance line item would be more in line with the 30,500 on FY20. Um, if you took that roughly $9,000 and, and put it down into the retirement, I think there was, uh, I don't know, some bad bookkeeping there. Um, we, we've addressed it and, and still working with that. Um, so down in utilities, utilities aren't necessarily changing much of anything, except we're going to be hitching on to the town water and sewer. Um, so with, I do believe Tom Badowski gave an estimate of the 21. So we're going up, uh, going up from 800 to 2150. Now here's here's the the big increase is in communications and our dispatching fees. So it, we this is one of those line items that we don't have any control over. And so this kind of dictated a 4% increase. We were just over $50,000 and probably about uh, three weeks ago now, um, we were then informed that they were uh, looking for a loan. They got approval for a loan for upgrades to some of the cell tap, some of the towers and such that they use, which was divided equally amongst all the departments using um, the services for Capital West, who is our dispatching service. Um, so we are looking at $2,500 a year for the next 10 years um, on top of those dispatching fees. Um, going down through um, the building line items, they're all staying roughly the same. Um, you know, heating and plowing, uh, the rubbish removal is, the rubbish is like the only thing that we can actually uh, count on. Um, anything else is merely up to mother nature and, and whatever building maintenance that might have to come up. As you can see in 2000, uh, FY20, we did end up overspending on the buildings. So, um, moving down to the trucks. Um, and again, this is one of those ones that, you know, you don't have that uh, crystal ball to really see how much, what the cost of fuel is going to be or what the repairs to vehicles will be. Um, we have um, just early spring picked up a used vehicle, and we can talk about that a little later in the down through the um, budget, but uh, so being a used vehicle and it's much newer than, than our others that we should um, see a less in vehicle repair. But again, you know, um, not willing to cut it a whole lot. So, so we're kind of leaving that the same. Tires, the, the only thing on tires is, is uh, just enough to get to, Two tires and that's an insurance it is basically what I'm looking at right there. We have no vehicle that is in, in need of tires at this time. Um, so moving down through to gear, pretty good shape with gear and uh, the chief and, and Another officer has gone through and, and looked at our gear and looked at the, the needs of the department. And so we were able to uh, cut some from the gear purchases as, as well as uh, the uniforms. Uh, uniforms in this case are, are basically t shirts, hats type thing. It's not uh, official uniforms. So moving down to equipment. Equipment is staying the same virtually, it, with the exception of the hose testing. Um, there's a couple departments that utilizes a, a company that would come in and test, and um, they would test all the hose and, and provide all the records. Um, you know, with and, and I can't tell you exactly how many thousands of feet of hose that our department has, but I can tell you it's probably upwards of six thousand feet that needs to be tested and that is uh, very 
very demanding, labor intensive, and, and we, we would spend, we spend most of the summer, or at least a good portion of it, testing those. EMS purchase, purchases have been brought down some. Uh, and moving down to the loan. So we currently have an SCBA uh, loan and it's costing the department just over $30,000, $30,400-ish. Um, and we have probably 18 to 19 months left on that loan. And we have uh, enough funds in our reserve to uh, pay that off. And at the same time, we just picked up a loan for the used vehicle. And, and Keith can talk more about, about the vehicle if you had questions about that, which is coming in just a, a little over half of what that current loan is at 17.5. Um, so there's, a, there's an actual savings there in paying off the SCBA and just replacing it with the used truck loan. Um, one of the things that kind of stood out and, and it's not so much in the budget um, for miscellaneous, uh, we have a $500 line item of miscellaneous. And as you can see in, in uh, FY20, it was well over a thousand. Um, this is, uh, I guess, poor judgment on uh, designating the, the line item at which some of these purchases were made. So um, we have also addressed that. I do not see uh, a miscellaneous line item being overspent like that. Um, so, you know, bringing it down to uh, total expenses for FY22 is 325229 um, which is $27,000 uh, less than the FY21 budget. So that's a little over 8% decrease of, of last year's budget. Is there any questions? So we we reduced the budget in in respect to, you know, the the town asking its different departments to reduce their budget due to COVID. And uh, we looked at that. We looked at this this budget really, really hard to see where we could save to help out the the residents because of um, economic impacts for this year. We were able, and we brought it down down by eight point three percent less than it was last year, um, in respect to saving for them. I I just want to thank you guys. I know that we spent a lot of time on that, and I think we did a good job of getting that budget right where it needs to be. Um, and getting a better handle on it so that it's going to be you know much more predictable in the future and we're going to be able to spend more uh, effectively for the fire department keith, thank you keith and joe i i sincerely appreciate it both as a select board member and a taxpayer that you know you took that you know guidance or suggestion seriously and that, i mean going down 8.3 percent is is a you know big ask and i i certainly appreciate it Thank you. Well, and, and, and I think um, to, to add to that, it, is there is there room for more? And, and we'll be looking into that. But I'm going to tell you some of these cuts aren't something that uh, some of these cuts are going to hurt. And I, and I think in, in time, it'll catch up with us. Just just to you know, be clear on that. Um, nor do I see an eight and a half percent increase next year because of that. I, I'm not saying that either. Yeah, I think I think when you look at these things, I mean, starting over eight and a half percent down, right? Even if you gained four back the next couple of years, and you think about that in the out years, the amount of money that you're saving the community is is tremendous. Even if it's a short period, it it accumulates or compounds over time. The only 
uh, are these cuts, are they going to, how, how are they going to affect services? The biggest cut we had, or one of the biggest cuts we had was the, the savings in that loan. Uh, if you remember a couple of cycles back when um, Randy was on the select board, we had talked about taking, once that loan was paid off, being able to take it and put it toward capital replacement. Well, the time is that we were able, we were able to pay off that loan early. <clears throat> and instead of just taking it and putting it in the capital replacement in respect for you know what's going on now, we just did it as savings. That was one of the huge, largest sections right there. Um, well, and, and we still have a fair amount going into the capital replacement budget. Correct. 20,000 a year, right? Correct. We have we didn't reduce it. We, we kept it at 20,000 a year going into the capital replacement. I'm going to say, is that enough to go into capital replacement? If you want to pay for a, a fire apparatus cash, definitely not. Nowhere near enough. Um, but it's a definite it's a it helps to take the sting out of it when it's time for more vehicles um the um <clears throat> we do have a couple of purchases that we're looking at doing for improving our services coming up in the next basically the next six months and then the next six months after that uh, the biggest thing notably is we're looking to upgrade upgrade our hydraulic extrication tools. You know, the ones we have right now were purchased in 2003 and their technology doesn't really cut those high strength steel vehicles as well. So we're looking at upgrading those. Um, each of those tools is about $10,000 in, in and of itself. And we're looking at getting two of those basically over two budget cycles. Um, so that's going to be an increase that uh, uh, basically keep up with the world for our capabilities right there. Um, so you're saying one a year over two years, so one each year? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. And yeah, anything else? I have nothing. Anything else on the on uh, the for the Berlin Volunteer Fire Department? Yeah, we wanted to mention and talk about just a couple of other quick items. One is uh, I don't know if you're aware of it, but I, I think I've mentioned it before for sure. But the fire department's working on a like town merger study um, to uh, kind of develop what they see as a maybe not so much pros and cons, but you know, what, what would be the benefits of, of being a municipal department versus a separate volunteer uh, corporation. And also um, we wanted to mention that we, I had spoken with Diane and I don't know how the, how it would be handled, but one of the options we had spoken about was when things, when we get our new town administrator in place, um, after the first of the year, obviously, uh, looking at having um, some additional, maybe savings for the fire department um, by having, seeing if Diane could do their uh, accounting for them. Um, and Diane said it was it was, a, it was an option. Um, so I just don't know if we need to have a discussion down the road, obviously, about what that would look like, but I wanted to give you guys an update on that. Would that allow room for a paid position at the fire department one of the things we're doing with a merger study and we had to we had paused we paused work on the merger study for basically the last six eight weeks to to de develop this budget we just presented one of the things that we're looking at is the different uh service delivery methods um that we could provide to the town um combination department with possibly a paid member, all volunteer, so on and so forth. And um, so that is something that we are looking at as a, as a possible benefit in with this merger study. Great, thank you. Anything else, Keith? Um, nope, that's it for me. Joe? 
No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Uh, Emergency Medical Services Contract Award, uh, Keith. Uh, Tom? So we, we went out to RFP and got one response back from Barrytown. Uh, and um, uh, Keith Van Eiderstein, uh, fire chief, uh, did an evaluation. He sent out his, uh, his uh, review of that contract. Uh, he and I are recommending that the select board award the, the three-year contract, and it has a has an option for two additional years to Barry Town in um, in uh, um, in the for their for their um, in respect to their response here uh, to us. So I I sent out everybody copies of the of the response and Keith's review and recommendations. If there's any questions, we, we can answer them now. Any questions for Keith or Tom? If not a motion. I make a motion to approve the um, recommendation for a ambulance contract with Barry Town. I'll second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you both very much. Um, Vermont Trans V Trans um, alternate. Alternative transportation grant, Tom? Well, that was submitted uh, on, on a timely manner. B Trans, that's that uh, grant that the uh, select board was per participate in for the recreation path in the new town center area. Uh, B Trans has received it. They will not, uh, they'll wait. It, it'll be March when they uh, award. The grants. We don't know if we've got it or not. We'll we'll find out in March. Okay. Anything else on this? Uh, Berlin Planning Commission public hearing. So the uh, uh, Planning Commission has scheduled two public hearings for December uh, 16th at 7 p.m. The, the first hearing will be for the zoning proposed zoning changes with respect to the new town center. And the uh, second one will be for uh, a hearing on the uh, official map that you folks have seen for last several meetings. Um, um, I'll invite the select board to attend that if, if they so desire. Assuming that the public hearing does not uh, create a substantial changes to what was warned, the planning commission will then send that to the select board and the select board in turn will hold their own public hearings on this uh, sometime in uh, mid-January. Okay. Um, let's see here. Cannabis Regulation Act, Angelina. Uh, hold on one second. Uh, there we go. Okay. So I got a message from a community member saying that act, uh, I believe it was 107 was passed. Let me double check. Um, So uh, just asking if it could get on the 2021 ballot for Acts, Act 164 that allows uh, town the towns to permit cannabis retailers to operate within the town. And it has to be voted on within the town meeting. So I 
responded and sent an email. So this is just to get it on to the uh, the warning. Yep, just to get it on to the to the ballot. Okay, I have a motion. Do you, you want to make a motion for that, Angelina? I make a motion to add the uh, sales of uh, retail retailer cannabis to operate within the town, um, according to Act 164 for the March 2021 ballot. Is there a second? Pardon? I'll second that. Any further discussion? My my computer froze for a, my computer froze for a minute, so I just want to make sure I under I understand the, the motion. <laughs> it's it's still allow the town, uh, or it's it's for us to put on the ballot um, to allow uh, potential uh, growers and resellers of cannabis in inside the limits of berlin is that right i think yes. it's for re yeah so Resale. any retail retailers yeah so i believe stores would be able to sell as well i haven't looked though so don't quote me i'm sorry okay. yeah just to get on the ballot okay any other questions comments all those in favor? Right. Oh. Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Tom. Somebody uh, write up a, a warrant that's to be on the uh, ballot. Who, who's going to do that? You're just the administrator. Uh, is there? OK. Um, I. Good luck. I'll take in. Uh, I'll take in. Uh, get a hold of you. We can take and work it out. Uh, let's see here. Uh, minutes for November second, twenty twenty. November tenth, twenty twenty. November eleventh, twenty twenty. And November twenty fourth, twenty twenty. Brad. Yeah. I, I sent over today revisions from the conservation commission that i received on the november 10th minutes so that's with changes with changes on november 10th okay so uh let's have a motion on november 2nd 2020. i'll make the motion uh, i need a second You're on mute, John. Second, second, second. <laughs> okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, November 10th minutes with the, with the, um, uh, am uh, with amendments. We hear a motion. I haven't had a chance to look them over um, since they came in this afternoon, unfortunately. So I'm going to be ab abstaining. So I don't think I should make the motion. Okay. I haven't. I haven't had the opportunity to review them either. Maybe we should do that next time. Okay. So a motion to uh, set these off till next meeting. So moved. Here, a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, let's see here. Use of uh, town owned Kuaz Trail property. Brad, there are two other sets of minutes there. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, 
November November eleventh, twenty twenty. Which one was I sick for? It was the the second week in November, right? I think so. The second meeting. Yeah. So, but I was there. Yeah. So I can make the motion. Okay. I'll second. <laughs> um, my mute again. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. The minutes for November the 24th, 2020. Make a motion to approve the minutes of November 24th, 2020. Need a second. Okay. Um, uh, um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion carries. <laughs> uh, this is killing me. I can hear. I can hear. <laughs> I can't hear flow. <laughs> uh, okay. I, oh, she's okay. here. I, di I didn't know she was here. I can't hear her at all. <laughs> well, she's in the uh, the hallway, and I can hear her through the door. <laughs> Just, oh, okay. Uh, let's see here. The uh, use of town-owned Kua's trail property. Remember, I brought this to the select board a couple of meetings ago. I talked to the gentleman uh, about uh, requiring a certificate of insurance, naming the town as additional insured, and we discussed a uh, $2,000 performance bond. We thought he would have all that stuff uh, by tonight's meeting, and it has not showed up. Okay, uh, so we'll just put that off till uh, next meeting then. And if he doesn't come up with it, we, I don't know, probably no. Uh, a motion to um, a motion to uh, put this off till next uh, select board meeting. I'll make the motion to put it off to next select board meeting. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion carries. Uh, approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. Move to uh, approve payroll warrant 21-11 for payroll from November 8th, 2020 to November 21st, 2020, paid on November 5th, 25th, 2020, in the amount of $43,350.03. Payable warrant uh, 21 G11 with checks. Uh, 20720 to 20742 in the amount of $53,626.05. Payable warrant uh, 21G12 with checks 2043 to 20746 in the amount of $2,537.10. Uh, November reconciled bank statements for the general fund, sewer commission, and the water division. Here a second. Second. Hmm. Okay. Uh, any any other discussion on this? Hearing none. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion. Motion carries. Uh, round table, John. I'm speechless. I have nothing tonight. Uh, Justin? Nothing. Flo? And Angelina? I uh, just want to mention that I talked to Wayne today, and um, he explained to me what the confusion was and that there shouldn't be any further problems because he's uh, publicly, or not publicly, um, has it on record in agreement to the issues that were going on between him and the and the um, the the committee? 
So. Okay. Anything else? That's it. Motion to adjourn the select board enter, and enter into executive session. Move to adjourn the select board meeting and enter into executive session for a personnel and contract issue. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Oh, Brad, I need to move some people. <laughs> Expect any action, Who? Brad? Who's the iPad? Uh, yeah, Dave, we do. Okay, uh, all right, I'll hang out. Who is iPad on the on the call? Yep. Rory, are you iPad? No. No, I'm not. I'm moving iPad. There was a name on there before I, I don't remember. Okay. Hold on, hold on, Brad. Keith, I'm gonna move you for a bit. Okay. They're queuing up. I believe everyone's back, Mr. Chairman. Okay, uh, so I'm, uh, there's be no action taken. Uh, those, uh, a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned. Thank Have you. a great night. Thank you all. Thanks.